Yo, what's going on? We've got episode 6. Something happened. I recorded two more videos since then, and I noticed that each video was really laggy, so I couldn't upload either of those due to the latency. It's kind of weird, so let's go ahead and take a look at the recruiting status. Now, we had everybody visiting in week 9, and we went ham. We met our game goals for Matt Kimbrough. I believe we did the same for um, Jay Bowen, the running back. Um, so they visited in week nine and we dropped the door on them. We won like 51 to 10. So we're in the lead with this. Well, we were in the lead with this kicker, I believe. Yeah, so <laughs> we were getting like over a thousand points for each visit. Um, so we, we pulled ahead and quite a few of them. Uh, so Jason Thomas, we're in the lead. Aaron Morris, another tight end. So I'm just kind of looking to have somebody to back up. And then Charles Wynn, he is a 65 overall, but he's a 6-1 corner. So somebody that I could bring in later because we got Case, uh, Joey Odom. Number one corner out of Batesburg, South Carolina. Um, it's very important that most of your recruits, if you're doing your own dynasties, that you target southern states. That's not because I'm a southerner. It's just better football players come out of the south. And it's always been that way because the temperature in the southeastern part of the United States is more copacetic to bringing out greater players because you can play longer, train harder, as compared to the North, the Midwest, or even the West Coast. Um, the West Coast, specifically California, puts out some great athletes. But as far as most of the five stars that come out, you'll see them mainly come out of Florida, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, sometimes Virginia. Virginia will, will put out people like Michael Vick, Marcus Vick, Taj Boyd, stuff like that. So... Uh, our main guy that we really need is Matt Kimbrough because we're losing Earl Morris next year. Um, I've got one more unlock left, but um, pretty much we got taken out, so he decided not to not to come by. So I may have to change somebody to the middle linebacker position, probably Julius Burton because he's like our best guy. Now <clears throat> we're playing TCU, so we're sitting at five and two. Uh, I'll show you the scores of the other games. So just to kind of give you guys a little bit of what happened. So barely lost to Ole Miss. Beat California pretty well. They're still ranked, so we need them to win constantly. Then we lost to Iowa by four points. We beat Houston 35-31. to Beat Ohio State. Oklahoma State and Kansas State were the last two games. So, we dropped the door on Oklahoma State, and they were 5-0 and when we played them. They've dropped their last two. Kansas State rivalry game, and we dropped 51 on them. Just went absolutely insane. See if I can go off these team stats. Okay, so Earl Morris, three touchdowns, two picks, threw for 418. Rushing, Ferguson ran for 187 and a touchdown. Receiving... Alexander, a back backup tight end, got 106 yards. Mark Sanders got 56. Turner got 81. Strickland 50, 51. So we were spreading the ball around, but keeping our tight ends involved. And as far as let's see, sacks were concerned, we got two, and we got one pick by Stevens. So we did pretty well. Did pretty well. <clears throat> see if we can go to the stats. Because my defensive line has surprised me. Now, Earl Morris, the senior quarterback, 26 touchdowns, 10 picks. He's done a lot better than I thought he would do. Danny Ferguson's run for 758 yards and five touchdowns. Receiving Mark Sanders is at 630 yards and 13 touchdowns. And Michael Turner is freshman. He's got 657 yards receiving. I mean... What are you going to do about that? Ray Stevens, our best tight end. He's got two touchdowns, almost 300 yards receiving. So we're doing all right. Defensively is where we're going off. And it's mainly the defensive line here. So let's see. 
So Stevens, Burton, Rawls, pretty much linebackers taking the top three. And Tremblay, defensive end, 10 sacks on the season. Totally crazy. So we're in week 10. We got to got to win this game it's a conference matchup so uh, we're picked to win but we got to work on that turnover differential so let go they're doing a better job of executing that game plan and it's helping them out iowa state is up by three here we go he's at midfield there we go barely got it into mark sanders but hey man Dude's at 75 yards, fitting it right in there. First down. Turning Sanders into a legit prospect here. Gets to about the 41 yard. They'll spread the field here. Let's see what the defense does with a five wide outlook. Not bad, Strickland. Around the 26 yard line. It's first down. I mean, we are throwing, like, Earl Morris is throwing very well this season. So I can't be mad at him. Oh, I had a huge hole. Ooh, okay. I see you. I'm going to have to pull this play action. No! A wrong person. Oh. I had X open and I hit A. That was dumb. And maybe it confused him, but it was the heat that forced the bad throw. First and ten. Watch for the option. There we go. To about the 21 yard line. Can't believe it. There we go. He's brought down immediately. Minus three, baby. Third down and 12. Ball on their own 18. Here we go. As a man hit the big yards. Maybe could have gone for the pick, but nay. First down. C272. Gonna keep this ball just a little bit longer. I don't know. First down. There we go, Ray Stevens. This is a big first and goal. Not a bad. Iowa State has a three-point lead. Touchdown. There we go, Ferguson. Give me that touchdown. Nice run and a score by the halfback. Okay, so we're getting man. Not bad. Scrambling around. And he throws it away. Good job here by the defense. If you let that was a good play by D. Throw, he'll kill you all game. But they got excellent pressure on that play. Second down, ten yards to go. Ball on the 45. Sitting there and taking that. And they'll bring him down behind the line. You know, these backwards plays... I should have audible. Impact. It can damage a team's confidence if it keeps happening. That's right, baby. They don't want it. By 52. Easy, easy, easy. Sting a quarterback in the Sting gun Ray. with five receivers. Here we go. Black. Good set, boys. He's hit and taken down. It's going to be fourth and inches after that long pickup on third down. Let's see. Do we go for it? Quarterback, almost equally excellent catch by the receiver, but the defense topped them both by coming up with a stop. Coach is saying go for it. Fourth down, and 
the offense is still on the field. Iowa State is up by three. Very That's good. our first down, baby. Strickland gained seven yards with a catch there. They've done a great job on this drive with the underneath pass. The quarterback isn't forcing the ball, and you can see how effective he is. Now we're wasting the clock. Tackle made at about the 29-yard line. Ferguson picks up a yard on the play. That makes it second and eight. Here's the eighth play of the series. That's the first down that we needed. From the 18 yard line, first down. Not today. Tyree Anderson is going to hold on to it. The Horned Frogs will use their first time out of the half. This is the tenth play of this drive. Now we got light of fire skill activated. Watch for the man zone. go with him again and he'll be taken down behind the line well the defensive line got such a good push up front that there was no one on the offense to account for the linebacker and he got through almost untouched so it's third down now and they're gonna need about four Thunder! Thunder! a little more than two minutes to go in the fourth quarter there we go Strickland there and now they're looking at first and goal TCU will take their final timeout. Makes it first and goal. We're at the 12th play of the drive. Zone blitz is going to be coming at me. He tackles him for a loss. That's a loss of four. Minus three. That brings up second and goal. Easy. There we go. Great call. That Needed that. There. That score might be the deciding factor in this football game. And he tacks on the extra point. Let's get the latest now from Reese Davis. The Boilermakers. Ooh, Illinois beat Purdue. Yes. Boy, their critics going to have a field day after this performance. It is all over. And once again, we find out there are no foregone conclusions in college football. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Boy, this is turning into a shootout here. Now, remember, the last time we saw this offense out on the field, they answered the bell and scored a touchdown. Can they do that now a second time? Yeah, no timeout. Come out in a five wide set. Ready, and he's taken down around the 34 yard line. So we got ourselves a five step pass. Uh, yeah, they're going to stop. A little over a minute in the game. The spike will stop the clock. That'll make it 31. It's third down, and this three offense down, is about down. three feet away from that first down marker. Pressure coming. There we go. Incomplete. So it's fourth and one.
Yes. Unbelievable stop when they had to have it on fourth down, and that should be the football game. And there's a missed opportunity by the offense. This time the offense isn't successful on fourth down. The defense had that option play snuffed out from the get-go. And we see this offense again after what you, Kirk, called a very physical touchdown drive. Well, I say that, Brad, because the big hog mollies up front were able to create holes for the running game, and it helped them get the score. Let's see if they can do it again. They need about three yards to get the first here on second down. Look at Ferguson go. The Cyclones take a timeout. It's first down, and they'll be looking for six points here. Because I want to even up the touchdowns, you know what I'm saying? There we go, Mark Sanders. Get you one. He's got a touchdown every single game. Loving it. He makes the PAT with a three-play, 31-yard drive, and they get it in for seven. So our score, 38-21. At the 44. I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there hoping for a miracle, but I seriously doubt we're going to see one today. He's scrambling. There we go. At the 38. That's the game. And this one's all but wrapped up with the final score, 38-21, Iowa State. Yeah, Ferguson deserves that. So we that racked off five consecutive wins. For EA Sports and Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brad Nessler. We'll see you soon for another edition of NCAA Football 14. There we go, boys. Okay, now let's go check out the game stats. Player stats. 25 of 33, two touchdowns, two picks, only sacked once. Ran for 156 and two touchdowns with Ferguson. Receiving, Strickland got 63. Sanders got 85 and a touchdown. Harrison, 24 and a touchdown. Michael Turner got 90. Stevens, 21. Alexander, 36. Defensive, James Rawls. Yeah. One sack by Ryan Davis, Corey Ross, and Tremblay. He leads the NCAA. Solos led by Rawls, followed by Steven, Brown, and Burton. So we dropped TCU 38-21, much needed win. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.